looking unto Jesus is actually what we need to do every day, every time, in any condition that we find ourselves. Because that is the surest way. That is the only way that we can be successful in whatever thing that we are doing, both in this um, spiritual race, in our jobs, in our families, in our relationships, in health and in disease, whatever it is. Looking unto Jesus every time, fixing our eyes on him, focusing on him is what we have to do to achieve all this. And I want to take my um, lesson today from the book of Matthew, chapter 14, from verse 25. Matthew 14, 25. Um, I'll start from 24. But the sheep was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with wave, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spoke unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be you, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind was terrors, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O oh, you of little faith, wherefore did you doubt? So when you, when you look at this story, there are a lot of lessons we learn from this story here, when we're talking about looking unto Jesus. If you look at what Peter did here, when, 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 when Peter came out from the ship and started walking to Jesus, he, he took full step, a few steps walking on the water. But when he removed his eyes from Jesus and started to look on the wind, I started to look on the storm and probably started to think about how deep the water was. I started to think about the waves and the dangers associated to, with what he was doing. That affected his faith. His faith began to diminish and this guy, um, Peter, began to sink. So if we are bringing ourselves in this picture, the church and all of us today in this picture, how does this affect us? Mm -hmm. How can we, what can we do so that we will not make the same mistake that Peter made? Because the, the mistake that Peter made here was that he removed his eyes from Jesus Christ and he doubted. So Jesus Christ said, why did you doubt? So if you look at the water here today, if you look at the water here today as the world where we live in, and if you look at the wind, and the storms and the waves, as the troubles, the tribulations, the persecution, famine, hunger, sword, that is all over the world today that we see every time. You notice that before Jesus Christ called Peter to come down from the ship, the wind was already contrary. So before Jesus Christ called us, tribulations and all these troubles, we are there. They did not start because Jesus Christ called us. They were there before Jesus Christ called us. And they, 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 they are not there because of us. This is their territory. They are doing their work. 
But what Jesus Christ wants us to do is to fix our eyes on him. These things will be there. Fix our eyes on him every time. If you, if you turn to John chapter 16, verse 33, you see what Jesus Christ said. John 16, 33. Jesus Christ said, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So when Peter fixed his eyes on the storm and the wind, Peter could have realized that there is no salvation, no help can come from those storms. No help can come from those storms. And Peter, if he had looked up to Jesus Christ, he would have noticed that even in the midst of the storm, that Jesus Christ was still standing on the water. Jesus Christ was still standing on top of the water. But Peter did not realize this because he was busy looking outside Jesus Christ. So, if we must do well in this race and in this Christian journey, we must fix our eyes on Jesus Christ. Every time, our eyes must be on Jesus Christ. If you turn your Bible to Isaiah 45, verse 22. Isaiah 45, verse 22. Look unto me, and be you saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is none else. So, at any given time, when we're having troubles in our family, when we're having troubles with our jobs, when we're having troubles with our health, when we're having trouble with our finances, no matter what ever it is, the right thing to do is to look up to Jesus Christ. The right thing to do is to fix our eyes on him. If it is trouble, the Bible said that he is the prince of peace. If it is sickness and disease, the Bible says it is the Lord that he let us. Whatsoever it is, he is the only source of salvation. If we, if, if we turn our eyes from him and begin to look at our troubles and begin to look at all those things that are trying to distract us, if we look at those things very well, we'll notice that there is, we cannot get any help from trouble that is trying to bring us down. And we cannot get any help from sickness that is trying to kill us. The only way we can get help is Jesus Christ. And we must put our faith in him. Because if we don't put our faith in him, what happened to Peter? will happen to us because our doubt, our doubt diminishes our faith. And when we don't have faith in Jesus Christ, our faith is, is, is like a cord that connects us to Jesus Christ. And doubt is like a sharp object that breaks it. And we're no longer connected to him. So we have to uphold our faith and we have to fix our eyes and continue to look unto Jesus Christ. How long can we look on, unto him? We must continue to look unto him to the end. And what about all these storms and all these troubles that surround us? Are they, are, do they have the power to stop us from following God? Though Peter was on the water and the water was shaking, but Peter was still on top of the water, walking on top of the water before he began to doubt. If you turn to um, Romans, 8 verse 35. The book of Romans 8 35. Book of Romans 8 35 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? In verse 37, it says, No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. 
In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So, um, Apostle Paul did not say that we have conquered them. It's, it, that could have been an understatement. He said, we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. So, if we have already conquered these things through Jesus Christ and through our faith in him, why do we turn around and put our eyes on them and allow them to distract us from the main subject? So, brethren, let us remember always and every time to fix our eyes on Jesus Christ. If you turn to Hebrews 12, verse 2. Hebrews 12, verse 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right and he sat, sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. That was the mistake that Peter made. Jesus Christ started the journey for him. Jesus Christ was the person that said, Come, come. Peter was in the ship. Before Jesus Christ called him and said, Come. Jesus Christ was the person that started this journey for him and he removed his eyes from him. Brethren, this is the same thing that will happen to us anytime we remove our eyes from Jesus Christ. The world is an unstable place, just like the water, full of trouble, trials, persecution, famine, salt, everything, just like the wave and the storms that we saw in this uh, passage. But putting our eyes on Jesus Christ, who walked on the water, Remember, Jesus Christ has authority over land and sea. And this is not the first time Jesus Christ is dealing with the water. In Genesis, the Spirit of God walked on the surface of the water. In Exodus, Jesus Christ, God divided the Red Sea and his people passed. In the book of Joshua 2, God caught up Jordan and his people passed. So even in the book of Kings, when Elijah used his mantle to, 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 to strike at the river, it divided. So this is not the first time God is dealing with water. He has authority over every situation. And he can put, bring everything under control. We cannot, but we can when we look up to him and fix our eyes on him, trust in him, have our faith in him always. And how long we do this is from the beginning to the end. So, brethren, I want to encourage us through this sermonet to always put our eyes on Jesus Christ, look up to him in everything, and we will be fine.